Welcome to Saturday. Today we are going to review Tailwind Nutrition Endurance Fuel in the lemon flavor. So I know I've had Tailwind before, but um, I think we forgot to actually try this before we filmed this video. So we're going to try it today on film. Should I grab that bottle? No, I'm going to try the powder. You can tell a lot about the powder just straight up. It smells very lemony. That would be good during training. Hmm. I can tell you that right now, especially as you get more dehydrated and you've been exercising for a while, I think that would actually taste really good. Like salty lemon? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a lemon drop with a little bit of saltiness. Mm. It's like really good. Um, Sounds delightful. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> cut, cut that out. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> We're going to have ants. They want you to mix two to three well-rounded scoops with 24 ounces of water or 710 milliliters of water. 12. Probably 12 ounces. So let's do one and a half well rounded yeah, scoops. One and a half. Well, it says two to three well rounded, so. Appears mixed. Hmm. It was pretty light flavor. So imagine you've been riding your bike oh, yeah. in the hot sun for like four hours or something. Mm hmm. It'd be great. There's not much flavor at all. Yeah. It's good. Passes the taste test in our opinion. Now let's actually look at what is in this. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna say it's maltodextrin or dextrose first and that it outweighs the amount of fructose in it at least or around two to one just based on the sweetness profile of the beverage. The first ingredient is dextrose, glucose outside the body, then sucrose, then citric acid, sodium citrate, sea salt, potassium chloride, organic lemon flavor, calcium carbonate, and magnesium oxide. Dextrose is the first ingredient, that's why it's minimally sweet, and then they use sucrose to add the necessary fructose component. Sucrose is 50% dextrose or glucose and 50% fructose. So the fact that sucrose comes after dextrose in the ingredients list means that it has to be at least two to one glucose to fructose, maybe three to one glucose to fructose. And you can't know because they won't tell you on the package. Maybe they tell you online that this is close to a two to one, but it would be better if there were more fructose. Agreed. And fructose is significantly sweeter than glucose. So when you taste something like this, it's not extremely sweet. You can guess that there's a little bit less than a one to one ratio of glucose goes to fructose. So then they also have citric acid, sodium citrate. Thoughts on sodium citrate? Awesome. And sea salt, which is right after sodium citrate on the ingredients list. So there's no way to know uh, how much sea salt there is, like how much of your sodium is coming from salt instead of sodium citrate. You want at, at least half or all of it to be coming from sodium citrate during exercise because it's easier on your gut. We can infer, because I see that potassium chloride is the next ingredient below sea salt, we can infer that there's more sea salt by weight than potassium chloride. So how much potassium do we have? Uh, in the in one serving, so one scoop of this, we have 90 milligrams of potassium. Potassium chloride doesn't weigh the same as sodium chloride sea salt. Mm -mm. Should I get out the calculator? Yeah, why not? Okay, and this is why we made an app. Trademark what, what is dextrose. the asterisk for? Um, Non-GMO. Oh, non-GMO, mm -hmm. good, really important. Yeah, they wanted to let us know that. You don't want any bad DNA in your body. We go so deep down the rabbit hole of why producers of these products put the ingredients they put in them that we end up trying to psychoanalyze their founders to figure out what decisions they were making <laughs> because they don't make nutritional sense or marketing sense sometimes. Yeah, we go, to, we go down the rabbit hole for you. Anyway, potassium chloride, there's not a ton in it, not that big of a deal. If there was a lot of potassium chloride, it could be a problem for your GI tract but there's not that much, which is good because you don't need it anyway. And honestly, if they just deleted that from the product, that'd be even better. What could they remove from this product to make the product better? Good question. Let's just go from the bottom and then work our way up. Magnesium oxide could go, calcium carbonate could go, organic lemon flavor, I mean, it's nice to have that, so I might keep that in there. Potassium chloride could go, sea salt can go, even though I have like these good feelings when I read sea salt, I just think of the ocean and it makes me happy. We really don't need that here, just go to the ocean. Get rid of the go to the ocean part. That was very rude. Um, let's start over with that. Wait, just go to the ocean? Why? Why is that rude? Well, because not all of us get to go to the ocean, Alex. Like, <sighs> okay, let's go back. Sodium citrate should definitely stay. Citric acid probably should stay for flavoring. Sucrose should stay and dextrose slash glucose should stay. So what we need to do, if you guys are interested, is we need to figure out what the molecular weight of potassium chloride is and what the molecular weight of NaCl, aka sea salt is. And then we need to figure out how much potassium chloride by weight of the product is added to the mix to get 90 milligrams of potassium from potassium chloride. And then we need to figure out how much does that guarantee 
by weight that sea salt is in the product. So how much sea salt is in the product by weight because it's above potassium chloride on the ingredients list. Then we can infer how much sodium at a minimum is coming from sea salt. I will give a lifetime subscription to our app to anybody who does the math and figures out exactly how much sea salt is in this product and how much sodium came from sea salt as compared to sodium citrate. I did want to mention that there's a little story on the back of this package here. So this product was created by Jeff Veerling. Is that how you pronounce his name? Never heard of him. I apologize if I'm butchering your last name. And it says, I created Tailwind in my kitchen after suffering at the Leadville 100 from nutrition that turned my stomach into a brick, was a pain to use, and tasted awful. Word spread and soon my mixer couldn't keep up. I love helping athletes beat their goals and feel great using Tailwind. Let me know it, how it works for you. So yeah, there's nothing worse than being at altitude racing uh, 100 miles either on foot or on a bike. I don't know if he was riding or running the Leadville 100, but nothing worse than having horrible GI distress, feeling hypoglycemic because you're not able to consume enough, and wanting to just easy on your stomach, no gut bombs, simple and complete. Ditch the gels, chews, and pills. I do agree with that. Tasty all day. Light flavor tastes better the longer you go. I do agree with that too. In the nutrition, you'll notice that, well, in the ingredients, you'll notice dextrose is high enough up, like we mentioned, that uh, there's more than two to one, or at least two to one glucose to fructose. So it could actually cause a bit of a gut bombing effect. And I've actually had clients who have used Tailwind at my carb recommendations, carbs per hour recommendations, and they can end up having, um, yeah, a gut bomb effect if they're consuming like 100 grams per hour or more using just Tailwind. And the reason is you just get too much glucose. Uh, your glucose receptors in your, or um, your glucose transporters in your gut get overloaded and your gut backs up and it feels terrible. Um, the way to fix that is you just add sugar to that and it becomes pretty optimal. Add more fructose in. How would you use this product? I would add sugar and sodium citrate. I would get half my sodium and half my sugar or carbs from this product and half from sugar and sodium citrate. Because there's too much glucose relative to fructose, you would add sugar as ha make sugar half your carb source and then this the other half. Bingo. Got it. Okay. And because I'm cutting this down to only be half of my carb source, that means I'm only getting half of the sodium that they would recommend and that's why I add sodium citrate. I do like the time to reorder line here. Ooh. Nice little, 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 nice little UI piece. Yeah, a little dotted line that says, oh, time to reorder. Tailwind wins the award for coolest founding location, Durango. Durango, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. That is really cool. I do agree with what they say, or when they say ditch the gels, chews, and pills. Yeah, you definitely don't need that, any of that. In fact, if you use gels, this is the, probably the most common time I've seen people have problems with Tailwind, is if you're using gels, which are often even more biased to glucose on the glucose-fructose mm -hmm. side of things, that's when people get into trouble with Tailwind, is if you're adding high glucose gels on top of this, because this is already too much glucose if you're using a high carb approach. Keep now that we're at the tail, tail end of our video. Oh my gosh. Just stop. Let us know if you love Tailwind in the comments. Until next time.